welcome to Global Connections on Think Tech's live streaming network series, broadcasting here in downtown Honolulu in the Pioneer Plaza. I'm Grace Chang, your host for the show today, and I have with us today our guest, Dr. Fun Le Ha, professor at the College of Education at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and Dr. Liam Kelly, associate professor of history at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Today we'll be talking about the upcoming international conference on engaging with Vietnam that will be taking place at East West Center in October. And so before we move on to speak with our guests, I'd like to announce the first speaker of our presidential lecture series for the fall semester at Hawaii Pacific University. Um, it will be Carlos Manuel Rodriguez, the Vice President of Co Conservation International on Conservation Policy. And prior to coming on to Conservation International, Minister Rodriguez was a Minister of Environment and Energy at the Republic of Costa Rica. And he's also the founder and board member of numerous environmental NGOs in Costa Rica, as well as of various research centers on tropical research in the country. So he will be speaking on the mouse that roared, Costa Rica's paradigm shift on the road towards sustainable development. Next Wednesday, September 7th at 5.30 at the Aloha Tower Marketplace, Multipurpose Room 3. So for more information, please go to www.hpu.edu under the Presidential Lecture Series. So I'm very happy to have you guys here today, my friends yeah. Leha yeah. and Liam. Very good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see see you. you. Yeah. Great to have you guys on. Um, I've, got, I've known you all for a while now. Mm -hmm. Liam and I were students together going way back mm -hmm. when in mm -hmm. Vietnam Studies at mm -hmm. University of Hawaii. And I had the pleasure of attending the last Engaging Vietnam mm. in yeah. Vietnam. In Thái Nguyen. In Thái Nguyen. Yeah. yeah, in Thái Nguyen. 2013. 2013, yes. yeah. Mm. yeah. So mm. every year you guys put on this conference right at various sites. So we're really excited to talk about that here mm. at Global Connections. Um, this is your first time on Global Connections, mm -hmm. is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, my first time. <laughs> <laughs> Really great. So, I mean, I would love to like let you talk a little bit about yourselves, like your background and, and you know where you're from, um, what your work is in, and, and how you got into uh, this this project with engaging Vietnam. Okay. Yeah, actually, we were talking about this this morning, and it dawned on us that our backgrounds are in many ways are, are different, but they converge in this conference. Um, in that my background, I come from uh, somewhat like you from a kind of an area studies background where I grew up at a time when we didn't know anything, or at least I didn't know much about Asia. And uh, I went to Taiwan after university, studied Chinese, and then I wanted to go to graduate school, but I couldn't imagine going to like the East Coast and studying about Asia in the snow. I wanted to be someplace that was more like Taiwan. I didn't know anything about Hawaii, but it, it seemed like it, it must be more like, like Asia than uh, the East Coast was. Mm -hmm. And so I came here and studied Chinese history, Southeast Asian history, um, and then by, the, by incredible luck, I got a job uh, right when I graduated and I've been here um, ever since. So I came here sort of in search of Asia, um, whereas Leha's path is, is very different. She started in Asia, and maybe you mm. can tell. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, uh, you know, my name is very confusing, Phan Leha. Yeah, so actually that is the original Vietnamese name. So Phan is my family name. So you mm -hmm. yeah, just so you know, and so in case people wonder, right? So I, um, I'm from Hanoi, Vietnam, um, and I moved to Hawaii recently from Melbourne, Australia. So you can see that, you know, just like what Liam said, I think I'm a product of a kind of post Doi Mới and uh, post Cold War and global Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I think um, and, and engaging with Vietnam really reflects that global um, movement and, and global engagement that you know I somehow. I would think experience, as well as the experiences that so many people who have been joining the Engaging with Vietnam conferences series, in, including yourself and Pierre Axelin and Hai Nguyen from HPU. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Doi Moi is, uh, you know, what gave Vietnam the opening after mm. 1986. And so this is, you know, where we see Vietnam becoming more integrated and very dynamic part of the global um, economy and society. Can you tell us a little bit more about Doi Moi for the audience members who might not know about it? Yeah, it started in um, um, 1986, and at that at that time I was still very little. So I learned about Doi Mới um, very much via my parents' conversation and from whatever presented to us on our television. So I know, like black and white television those days, and and so Doi Mới was a word that. Um, constantly emphasize, emphasize, and emphasize, and re repeat it every day. And now I'm really glad to see that Doi Mới has become an English, a part of the English language as well. So when we talk about Doi Mới, yeah, so it refers to, you know, reform or renovation, um, you could say, of the economy in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Started yeah. in 1986, is yes, that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. So I mean, after a, s several years of being, in a, in a sense, a kind of closed-off country, mm. in '86 Vietnam started to More reform like economically to open up, economy. which is when we all got interested in it, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we're we're part of this first post more post doi moi foreign generation of people who became interested in Vietnam, who went there, who studied the language, mm. and started to research about mm. it. So not only did Vietnam open up itself and, and, and send its people out into the world, but those of us who were outside of Vietnam also went to Vietnam at that time and continued to do so. so. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is something that the, this engaging with Vietnam conferences is, is about, right? It's about like promoting Vietnam studies like uh, in various different countries in the world. Like you've held, this would be the eighth mm -hmm. Vietnam, Engaging Vietnam conference. Um, and you've held it in Australia, in various parts of the United States, mm -hmm. as well as various parts of Vietnam. Vietnam. Yes. And, and it's really interesting because, yeah, as Liam, you were saying, like we were, you know, it, it, Vietnam was very closed mm -hmm. before 86 and then gradually opened mm -hmm. after Doi Moi. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first went, it was in 1991. It was still like oh. the end of the mm -hmm. Soviet era. Yeah, right, and there right, were yeah. still like, you still got Soviet water, right? Uh, and right, there were right, still right. people trying to return to the former Soviet republics. Mm -hmm. um, but Vietnam studies has evolved so much mm. right mm. since then at that point we really especially in Western countries or or non communist mm. bloc countries mm. didn't have a lot of contact and exchange so right. so can you tell us a little bit about like yeah Vietnam studies as it evolved um, where we are today and yeah I mean so I that reminds me um, we, uh, we, we had this conference in, at the East West Center when a few in years ago? In 2012. Yeah, so actually it's at UH this time, this time. not at the East West Center. Yeah. But we, it's fine that that was mentioned earlier because it, we, it was held at the East West Center before. And I remember at that time one person at the East West Center saying to us, why are you calling this engaging with Vietnam? We've been engaging with Vietnam for years now. And in actuality, yeah, the name you could understand in a different ways, but we're not trying to engage with a place that no one has engaged in, but it's just using Vietnam as a way to, you know, uh, as a kind of a topic to engage in a lot of different ideas and discussions mm. in different fields from education to the arts to mm. political science to history. Because really at this point, the world of Vietnamese studies uh, has developed so much uh, over the past 20 years, and it's you know a very vibrant field that is now you know led not only uh, whereas before maybe there was a lot of foreigners who were uh, the main people in the field. Now there is people from Vietnam. There's um, dis you know descendants, people who um, emigrated from Vietnam after the war, whose children have are now have PhDs and are you know um, leading scholars in the field. So it's a very diverse and developed field by this point. Yeah, and actually, you know, starting 2009, when I was in Melbourne, Australia, I realized that I don't know much about Vietnam. As soon as I had more contacts with the Viet Vietnam study world of scholarship, and then I realized that, you know, oh, come on, I, I can no longer take for granted that I know Vietnam because I am from Vietnam or I am Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. So ignorance was really one of the very important elements in why I started the Engaging Good Vietnam initiative. Mm -hmm. So I must say that, yeah, so ignorance, mm -hmm. it, it plays a role. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and I, I like to acknowledge that, yeah, Lei Ha is the founder of the Engaging mm -hmm. with Vietnam conference series, which has been, yeah, like I said, it's a very unique approach to, to engaging not just academics, but mm -hmm. policymakers and other professionals working in, yeah. in organizations concerned with Vietnam or in Vietnam. So how did you conceive of, of this conference? I mean, typically the, the, the mm -hmm. subtitle is... An in interdisciplinary dialogue. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, you know, um, actually, uh, yeah, I've mentioned before, like ignorance play a role, but also, I, I, you know, because I've done a lot of work with the internationalization and globalization of higher education, and seeing the instant movement of people, particularly you know Vietnamese graduate students around mm -hmm. the world, and also, um, and then suddenly I realized that. No, actually, Vietnam must be approached from more or less like a, a global perspective rather than just as a place stuck in its own geographical kind of uh, space. So, um, and then, and I, I do a lot of work with education or in the field of education, but I also realize that Talking about Vietnam, for example, from education alone doesn't seem to do justice for a lot of the knowledge and scholarship and also for, um, for developing a more complex and sophisticated understanding of Vietnam and of scholarship on Vietnam produced by so many scholars and graduate students everywhere. And at and those days when I was in Melbourne, I also observed that a lot of the work produced on Vietnam actually was so different from what I had learned in Vietnam about Vietnam. Mm. And so that challenged me, that questioned me. And then I said, hey, actually, Vietnam is so fascinating, a lot more fascinating than what I had n known about it. So I think yeah. maybe based on some of those things, I kind of gradually developed the Engaging Good Vietnam, bringing different disciplines together. Yeah. I, think, I think one way to look at it is, you know, if we put it again in this picture of Doi Moi and the changes mm -hmm. in the 90s and the 2000s, you were really kind of in the first wave or even before the first wave of Vietnamese students to start going overseas, right? Kind of and to get a PhD, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Um, you know, what happened is that I think, and it, we still see this, is a lot of like Vietnamese students will go to a program somewhere where there won't be an expert on Vietnam mm -hmm. at that university, mm -hmm. and then their received knowledge about Vietnam is just taken for granted. Mm -hmm. They're from mm -hmm. Vietnam, they must know about exactly. Vietnam. <laughs> but then when, you know, yeah. when people who say study about Vietnam read what they write, they go, no, no, you can't say these things. Mm -hmm. And so I think <laughs> Leha became aware of this and mm -hmm. you know, said, wait, we can't just, I can't take my knowledge for granted I have to engage with what yeah. other people have said about Vietnam, yeah. and mm. you know, to, and work out some kind of agreement or, mm. or, or kind of you know try, try to improve you know what we have going. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, very so, interesting. So, okay. um, we've got to take a short break right now. So I'm Grace Chang here at Global Connections on the Think Tank. Think Tech live streaming <laughs> network series, and we're talking with Professor Fun Le Ha and Professor Liam Kelly, both from the University of Hawaii, on the upcoming conference on engaging with Vietnam. So we'll be back in a minute, so please stay tuned for more of this story. Welcome to thinktechhawaii.com. This is Johnson Choi. I'm the host for the weekly Thursday 11 o'clock show called Asian Review. See you next month. Hi, my name is Justini Spiritu. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson. Every Thursday at 4 p.m., we host the Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. This is the place you can come to for insight on the perspective and history and passions of Hawaii's farmers and all folks involved in Hawaii's local food system. What kind of folks do we have on? So we have everyone from local farmers, we have foodies, chefs, we also have journalists, uh, researchers, anyone who's actually working to help make Hawaii's local food system that much better. So join us every Thursday and uh, tweet in to us and ask us some questions and leave your comments as well. Thank you. Hello, welcome.
welcome back to Global Connections. I'm the host, Grace Chang, here with Professor Fun Lei Ha and Professor Liam Kelly of the University of Hawaii talking about the upcoming conference on engaging with Vietnam. Okay, please, I'll take it back here with our discussion about the um, globalization of higher education and how Vietnam, Vietnamese studies has been benefiting from that, has grown from that. Um, I know both of you are interested in higher education, the changes in like the nature of, you know, how, how we're exchanging and, and producing knowledge. And especially this, this conference on engaging Vietnam brings together so many different scholars as well as professionals from different fields. So mm -hmm. um, you want to talk a little bit more about like the impact of, of internationalizing higher education on, on this field? Yeah, I think you might want, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just it's just, I it's, it's just amazing how much has changed. I mean, as you will remember, I mean, if you were in Vietnam in 91, I first went in 1996, we were the only Westerners walking down the street, and we were walking down the street a lot of times. Uh, <laughs> basically, no one knew English, or very few people, only a small group. And so, basically, we became a kind of bridge between the outside world and, and Vietnam. Uh, if you go down the street in Vietnam today, tons of people know English. People are sending their kids to starting elementary school overseas. They're going to universities. And it's just completely transformed how people see the world and I think what they see as important uh, that they need to know. I mean, for us, a lot of the world was a mystery that we were trying to just learn about. Uh, for a kid growing up in Vietnam today, the world's not very mysterious. It's on their iPhone. Mm -hmm. They've mm -hmm. traveled to many countries. You know, by the time they're teenagers, where I'd, I don't think I'd even left my home state by that point. And so, uh, you know, th the purpose of what we grew up learning to do, which was to learn about another part of the world and be the kind of experts on that, it's really, that's, I think, being called into question when you have all these people from around the world who are also engaging in producing knowledge. Although, as we've just said, they're not necessarily experts on it simply because they came from that place. So it's now we've cr got this world where our specialized, say, area studies knowledge of the past doesn't really make sense anymore, but it's still important because uh, you know other people don't necessarily have that same knowledge. Mm. But we have to find a way to bring these people together and, and mm. get them to exchange their ideas yeah. and learn from each other. Yeah, and, and at the same time, with the increasing introduction of English medium education in Asia in, in general and in Vietnam in particular, we can see you know different ways in which so-called knowledge on Vietnam has been produced from within, right? From, from within Vietnam, from within Asia. And, 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 and at the same time, I've also, I mean, um, according to my research, I've seen, um, you know, an, a very interesting phenomenon. That is the desirability of the idea of the West has been entertained and sustained a lot in the internationalization of higher education in Asia. Mm -hmm. And of course, and, and Vietnam is not, you know, um, uh, of course, is in the picture too. And, and so, yeah, all those phenomena and, um, uh, you know, and processes really, I think, work together to inform how knowledge on Vietnam mm -hmm. has been created. And so, uh, with the Engaging with Vietnam conference series, we try to engage with all these complex aspects. You know, not just Vietnamese inside Vietnam, but many Vietnamese now studying in Asia, let's, let's say in Thailand, in Singapore, in Malaysia, uh, in, in Korea. You know, they also talk about Vietnam, but from the very location they are located. And so in what way that is different or, or similar to how we, for example, located in Hawaii, look at Vietnam from that afar. So I don't know, yeah. it's quite exciting to me to, to have the opportunity to observe yeah. all the And phenomenon. actually, I mean, yeah. the, one of the great things about this concert, uh, this, concert, this conference. Um, conference, is that it, for some reason or other, it has created this niche where it brings out, attracts a lot of young, um, majority Vietnamese, but also just young people who are you know, getting PhDs like, at mm -hmm. the moment. But a lot of uh, young Vietnamese who are studying overseas, mm. and it brings them together with established scholars, yes, um, yes. Which, which is interesting. Mm. Um, but what's been particularly interesting is to see who these young people are. 
and it's yeah. been kind of changing. I mean, at first it was what you might expect, young mm. Vietnamese studying in Australia, the United mm. States, France. But in the last conference, for yeah, instance, exactly. I remember there were like someone who had gone to an English language program in, in Korea in and now was going to go to the United States. There's others. Yeah. And it's so it's you really see so this global world where mm. people are just are kind of finding their own paths that they're yeah. figuring out themselves. It's not just, oh, I need to get a scholarship to go to America or it's, well, I can go to this one first, I can go to Taiwan and in this English mm. language program mm -hmm. and then get a PhD in Singapore or maybe I'll go to Norway or I'll yeah. go to, it's so all, all kinds of things yeah. are happening. So we all come together. Which, in, but that yeah. then creates challenges for places like uh, American universities, mm. which you know have this sort of set way of doing things. We send people to Asia, we bring people here from Asia, well, People are doing these very kind of, you know, following these winding paths that yeah. take them to all kinds of places. Exactly. And how do you then link into this, you know, mm. diverse world now is, is yeah. an interesting question. Yeah. So, and, and that's why one concept that Liam and I have been very interested in is the concept of journey of knowledge. So we look at all these participants' various journeys of knowledge production related to Vietnam. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so again, mm. uh, like... Um, yeah, so maybe in the 90s or, or up until the 2000, you could see someone like myself as being quite uh, typical of, an in, of the first wave of international students from Vietnam, you know, after Doi Mới. But now young Vietnamese started going overseas at a very young age, mm -hmm. or they can already start English medium education right inside Vietnam, you know, at the age of four or five years old. And so that obviously affects and, and shapes how, how or what they know about Vietnam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So. And I know you, you've both written and we've talked about <laughs> like knowledge production, right? Like Liam was mentioning this, like how we used to study mm. Vietnam or right. Asia. Um, and then the idea that, yeah, like knowledge production is very different today mm. than mm. when, you know, we were kids or, or starting mm. in higher education because, yeah, there is so much no mobility. So mm. I think you, yeah. made, you, you had mentioned this word um, mm. in something you wrote, mo mm. knowledge mobility, mobility right? Yes. Yeah. And, and I think that's one of the interesting things about mm. this engaging with Vietnam conference mm. is that it, it moves from place to place. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. all these places where we, we see some significant interest in, mm. in Vietnam studies. Um, and you know how does higher how does how does Asian studies or the study of different areas that we you know in, in the United States like we've typically as Liam you said mm -hmm. approached it a certain way where we mm -hmm. feel that you know here we have the knowledge base and we bring people over mm -hmm. and we send people Americans over there how has that changed uh, that that's definitely been a, a recent shift in that well I mean I think this is the thing we're struggling with right now is that. Obviously, things have changed, and, and in many ways, um, universities, I think, um, aren't really adapting well to this or haven't figured out how to adapt well with this. With this conference, we can see what's out there, but how do you actually change institutionally to find a way to, ben to not even benefit, but survive with this? Mm -hmm is still, I mean, a huge challenge. So yes, it's fantastic that we can move this conference from one place to another, um, but then how does a single university, say, benefit from that? Um, because obviously, you know, if, if everything is sort of in some kind of virtual space somewhere, well, how, do, how does a university survive or what is its place there? And so I think there's this challenge that we have now in that in many ways, knowledge production, the way people interact is, between institutions, but institutions have to survive somehow. So how do we actually do that? And that's, you know. No, yeah, actually, I, I see it a different mm -hmm. challenge. I, I would say maybe some, um, I, I guess a contradiction here. So on the one hand, um, knowledge about Vietnam on Vietnam has been very global. I think mm -hmm. so. Uh, but at the same time, institutional approaches to area studies seems to get stuck in the dichotomize, you know, understandings of so-called the West and the rest of Vietnam in, mm -hmm. in this case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how can you bring the two seemingly very different processes mm -hmm. together, the global ap approach and the dichotomized approach together? So I think that is a real challenge now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
<laughs> Can you tell us a bit more about what we might see at this conference that's coming up in October? I know you have, you mentioned concert, and I yeah. think there are art, there, there artistic is a performances uh, um, beyond the speakers and the topics you'll be addressing. Yeah, so I think it was about a year ago, um, we were in Vietnam and some artists reached out to us who are interested in collaborating with academics. And that got us thinking, and then we decided to, for the theme of this conference, to focus on engaging with Vietnam through scholarship and the arts. Immediately after we sent out the proposal, people wrote in and said, wait, but I'm not an artist, can I still participate? And we're like, yes, yes, there's ways to do it. And we got really scared that maybe no one would uh, submit papers, but we got this outpouring of people we had never heard of who were doing stuff in ethnomusicology, in film, in um, uh, music, um, but with academic sides to it. Yeah. And so... Body painting. Yeah, it's just really interesting. So um, the conference this time, there, there is some parts of it that are still um, not necessarily directly related to the arts. There's going to be some you know, historical um, and stuff in education and, and things like that. But there is going to be a focus on uh, the connection between the arts and, um, scholarship. and scholarship. And there's going to be a concert. I'll let you talk about that. Yes, mm -hmm. and um, um, so I think we are very ambitious. <laughs> we try to have three sets of um, performances before, during, and after the conference, and you know, in which we particularly highlight um, a very young and talented uh, musician from Vietnam who's currently based in the Netherlands, Ngo Hong Quang. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean, let me keep a little bit of secret about that so that we, we really hope that you know people from the community will come and uh, appreciate his talent. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we met him this summer and he played yeah. for us and it's he is amazing. He's an incredibly talented musician. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So you know just just a heads up. Mm -hmm. So we will have a concert you know tentatively called yeah, the mm -hmm. music, um, Vietnamese music, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. with Ngo Hong Quang on uh, the 6th of yeah. October. The conference will be yeah. the 6th and the 7th, and a yeah. concert on the, on the evening of the 6th. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh, very exciting. Mm -hmm. OK, mm -hmm. well, we, I really look forward to that. Mm -hmm. And thank you both very much sure. for coming on the show. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if, if uh, we can look forward to more of these uh, coming up back mm -hmm. in Hawaii someday again mm -hmm. after this year. I know it'll probably move around, mm -hmm. yes. but very excited to hear from you two and talking about uh, engaging with Vietnam, Vietnam studies, um, internationalizing higher education to hear about all of the different exchanges mm -hmm. and also the dynamism of, of you know, all the uh, different young, young people in Vietnam mm -hmm. who are contributing to the study of Vietnam. I think that's really exciting. So thank you for joining us today. I'm your host, Grace Chang, and you can find me here every Thursday at 1 o'clock on Global Connections. So see you all next time. Aloha.